Goedemiddag mensen. Nice and hot today, 27 degrees. Leaves are still falling off the trees. But yeah, we've been doing a few bits and bobs now in preparation for winter. It's all the stuff that we do during autumn. So I thought let's just do a bit of a, like a general recap on what it is that we are trying to achieve during autumn and what we're going to do to get there. So the very first thing is don't procrastinate because procrastination leads to you giving up and you should not give up on warm season grasses so let's talk Kikuyu, Bermuda and Alem grass, Buffalo in particular you shouldn't give up right up until the point of temperature induced dormancy it's what I've done in the past not in this yard I do it with all of my other project lawns and it works we get nice and green for as long as possible into winter and when temperatures tell us to go dormant then we let dormancy happen the hassle and the reason that I bring it up like this is that what happens is people start to see especially in the high fault you end up with less and less rain because we are a summer rainfall region the Cape Tonian guys are getting more rain and we are getting less rain so what happens is you start to see your grass going a little bit iffy and it starts to get a bit dodge and all that kind of thing as the rain towards the end of autumn starts to disappear and you think that that's dormancy the onset of dormancy it's not it's because you are not watering enough uh, and because the way that the season is changing your ground is becoming dry and hydrophobic quite quickly because it hasn't been saturated all the time and kept being kept moist during uh, the rainy like it was during the rainy season so you need to keep up your watering at the very least. So a good product to use is, and I'll bring it up because it is a penetrant. It is not just a plain old wetter or spreader. It is a penetrant and, oh pen, where is it now? There we go, penetrant. That is very different to standard wetters and spreaders. They, they, they're designed for different things. You need something penetrative to help you out in this process. So talking about watering a little bit further, grass is like kukui. You need about, well, statistically, they need about 25 mils a week. That for me is an obs, uh, it's too much water. That's an obscene amount of water. You're wasting water. Uh, aim for sort of 15 mils a week if you need to come up with a number. Best thing to do, in my opinion, is read your lawn. Uh, if if the if both the grass and the soil uh, start to look a little bit iffy and if the lawn starting to get like you can see it when it starts to sort of crinkle up a little bit needs water and in each of those circumstances you should be trying to put down a little bit of wetting agent penetrative wetting agent every week every fortnight at the latest i would say in my opinion um, drenching i don't think that that's really the best idea in winter but for during autumn you can do a couple more drenches sooner rather than later and then as you progress into late autumn and winter you just keep doing little touch-ups the entire way through to make sure that you continue getting saturation into the soil of water because if the soil dries out not only is water and nutrients not going to be able to go into the soil remember dormant grass on the top might be dormant but the roots are still growing you still need to keep the soil okay so if the water is not going in that also means that the plant is not able to cycle correctly and do its usual photosynthesis process and then it's not able to release the soil is not able to release the gases that the plant is expelling as well and, and, the, and what the soil is generating those gases need to leave so that you can have good oxygen cycling as well so usually core aeration well not usually core aeration not only helps with compaction but it also helps with this expelling or releasing of uh, like carbon dioxide from the soil for example as well but that's again for a different day um, but it's also one of the things that can be done it's just very invasive costly time consuming much easier to just make sure that your soil is working correctly most of the time and for me that's always with the help of a wetting agent and then we'll talk about another product just now introduce carbon to the soil uh, but yeah keeping water saturation if the water can saturate it means that oxygen is getting down and all the other crummy stuff is able to leave as well very important the second thing that you need to worry about is what you could do to protect the plant from drought. And in most circumstances, that is a good kelp product. Like we've mentioned that a bunch of times, Natural Kelp Plus, but there are also other options to go with these days. There's Eclamax, for example, that's just plain old kelp, no extra 
proteins. It's just a very high quality kelp product. But the kelp, we all know that it's a biostimulant. We all know that it helps with root development and overall plant structure and resistance to disease. And it helps with both heat and cold tolerance, depending on the product. Not all products cater for drought tolerance. In fact, the only product that I'm aware of that is a, a kelp related product that is registered including drought tolerance and not just hot, heat and cold stresses including drought tolerance is natural kelp plus so we already spoke about the fact that and i mean we know it well enough now i think it's been drilled in every video kelp related products good ones at least and the type of kelp does matter and what they've done uh, to manufacture it is also incredibly important but kelp in general is going to help your plant build that resistance what else helps there you could use here's a starter fertilizer the reason that this is an excellent way forward is because of auxins and cytokinins and even though some of it's now rubbed out it is well in Vuma starter at least it's a, it's a nice high dosage and even Vuma Vegetator, which is a, a growth product, it's not a boosting product. It's, it's, it's a 513 fertilizer. It's for good growth and color and so on. It also contains auxins and cytokinins. That's why this range is such a clever range of products. Uh, the auxins are practically for everything top to bottom in the plant. The cytokinins help with cell redevelopment, restructure. It helps repair the plant. So it's an incredibly helpful set of tools, <laughs> ingredients, they, they are growth hormones, um, to allow the plant to rebuild itself after damage. So let's say I have picked up a couple of guys in the groups and that kind of thing now that have experienced damage with not necessarily insects. The insect thing, let's talk about something else and that's now fungus issues. So fungus, you've got the damage, you've treated it using a fungicide, you've still got the residual effect of the damage. You've, you've, you've still got the damage, the fungus might be gone, but the damage is there. The way to restart that is to introduce kelp or products that contain auxins and cytokines to help with cell development so the plant can regrow very quickly uh, and strong from the onset. Very important to do it that way. And again, if you notice, the starter fertilizer is the middle number, the phosphorus, the phosphates. On, it's not higher than the nitrogen and the potassium. Obviously the same thing here, this is even further away. But, the, you know, it just emphasizes more my point. Don't, th there's almost never a need for you to use a product where the nitrogen and potassium is lower than the phosphorus. Pretty much never. It's only, anything I can think of off the top of my head now is for some circumstances and the onset of seed development and even in those circumstances i would rather choose a different range of products and we'll talk about that on those specific vids <laughs> so we've spoken about what you can do to make sure that you've watered correctly and that you've got a way of getting water into the ground in the dry regions and in regions where you've got water logging is to use a wetting agent you're then preparing the, the plant uh, by using good quality kelp products to develop a little bit of resistance against uh, in some cases trout and well depending on the product and also cold you know stress related issues and possibly fungus related issues so that's the kelp product that aspect but that product does do some stuff for the soils more for the plant uh, depending again on what the product the list of ingredients really is but it helps a little bit of the soil and a lot with the plant what you need to do is still remember that besides wetting agents the soil needs to be looked after and in the half felt that lack of rain means that we are going to develop hydrophobic soil before we get into spring so all the way through the end of autumn all the way through winter and in the beginning of spring when it starts to get hot again and we don't have rain we now have hydrophobic soil and no rain and it's hot it's very bad <laughs> you want to make sure that you've looked after the soil now and you continue to look after it during winter so forget about all these guys that give you these conversations that microbes go to sleep basically during winter they just slow down they never go to sleep but there is some validity in it and that is goes back to my my old conversations of i don't like to use you know the, the store-bought even from some sand suppliers as well 
plain old lawn dressing, you know, it's so a fine compost basically. I don't want that on my grass because that organic matter is a, is a problem child basically. And even though that organic matter will be feeding your soil, it is also, and especially in autumn, and in spring depending on region as well, you're going to be potentially inducing fungus more quickly by introducing that organic matter to the surface. So what you want to do is you want to introduce a carbon source that is uh, processed in such a way, I'll show you now, that's going to be rescue, well you've already seen rescue, you know what it is, um, or other liquid carbon sources like Carbotec for example. It allows you to get good carbon source into the ground and carbon is not only a, a source of nutrients, it also holds nutrients and holds moisture and develops soil structure. So for example on rescue, at least 30% of that product doesn't disintegrate like a granular chemical fertilizer. Just When it's dissolved it becomes nothing, it's just stuff that ended up in the soil and that's how it can leach out quickly. This is where some of the leaching complaints come from. Whereas a product like Rescue, when that, when that little pellet breaks down, at least 30% of it remains as a part of your soil structure. The other reason that I don't want to put lawn dressing down, in any circumstance, even in spring, and you'll notice that I've not done it except for sand, unless it's a really specific, you know, particular circumstance that needs to be addressed, um, is that if you fill the thatch layer up with organic matter, Number one, you've done nothing for leveling because it's still going to break down and become unlevel again. But number two, the thatch layer on its own is like a sponge. It's holding moisture there all the time. So what that's doing to your root system is it's pulling the root system from the ground or well, the plant knows that there's water now above it, the roots. So the roots grow into that thatch layer. So what you do is you, if you filled it up with sand, you would cause the roots to go further down. If you filled it up with organic matter like a fine compost, which is lawn and dressing, you're going to cause it to want to go up into all those nutrients that are busy dissolving and being worked in right up into that thatch layer. So not only have you made your thatch layer much bigger by doing lawn dressing without thatch removal at least, you've added, and it's also another reason, if you do scarify that kind of thing, again, no poison, a point in having put down an organic substance to break down and you to remove parts of it again later on, it makes no sense. Rather do sand or topsoil to the extent that Two to five percent of it only is organic and even in that circumstance the organic complement could be uh, like a pelletized chicken manure like rescue for example it doesn't have to be actual organic um, matter like compost okay so we've addressed procrastination so still do something right up until temperature induced dormancy you've got to worry about watering and watering correctly you've got to worry about preparing the plant for the stresses that it's about to um, see or take on you need to worry about the soil and you need to mow and mowing is nothing special in autumn it's just a little bit higher don't raise heart of cut all in one go you're going to do it kind of like what you would do when you're bringing down your heart of cut you do it in notches uh, and also don't aim for long grass that's also not a good idea because in Kukuyo and Bermuda's case even a lemon, that kind of thing. When it gets too long, it gets a bit leggy, right close to the ground. It makes these like woody stalks that we've all seen. And that is going to mean that you've got bigger gaps for weeds and other junk to happen below the surface. And also it exposes more of the plant, more of the entire surface of the plant, to the elements. So in the dead of winter, if you've got this tall, like a really tall, wiry grass uh, turf structure, what's going to happen is with it being exposed more to the elements, when frost occurs, you are going to get completely nailed. As opposed to if it is nice and dense and a solid structure, a little bit more compact if I could term it like that, when the frost occurs, it's going to affect only the surface as much. That which is closer to the ground is going to be a little bit more protected. So the next thing on the list is just me talking about the precautionary factors. One is you're probably going to see more seed, uh, weed development and fungus some kind of disease it happens in autumn all over the country and you should be aware of it i don't like to do preventative uh, disease control because of the type of chemicals that you use for that but you can there are many options available if you need some help choosing something and you're desperate to do something uh, or if you've actually got a, a circumstance where you have to then address it or contact me if you're not really sure about what to do with it um, but 
think for the point of this video is rather to just be aware of the fact that this could happen and you need to keep your eye on it if it does happen. But I'm not going to recommend something for a preventative measure at this point. Um, regarding weeds, there are a couple of pre-emergence in South Africa. They're either very expensive or don't cater for everything or not ideal um, in my opinion. So again, I'm not going to advise those. I'd rather just say to you, go and do like for example, I've got, uh, I started off the season without any worry of weeds. In fact, I've got pretty much everything under control including grassy weeds. Um, but the oxalis, the little yellow wood sorrel, looks like clover. Those little things have started to come back. Again, I'm just, now that you can see the grass is a little bit long, I'm going to go and treat for them in a couple of days or whenever the heck I feel like it. Kill them off again, let it be. I'll rather do post emergent, emergent control in spots instead of this blanket cover scenario because I don't know what I'm doing uh, to the environment pouring a chemical, chemical again over the entire lawn area every single time I'd rather do the spot treatment because it's as little as possible over square meters um, and that applies to pretty much any chemical, any chemical except for fertilizers of course. And that's because fertilizers don't kill bees <laughs> or your dogs so keep, keep that in mind. So I do think that I've given you enough information I wanted to make this a short video just on touching on the topics required for autumn uh, so this is already a bit too long so if you've got any further questions you want more info whatever the case is going to be do the usual just get a hold of me via instagram you can dm me there you a facebook messenger uh, email me emails um, somewhere on my page and on the website just get a hold of me i'm happy to help please like and subscribe please hit the little bell notification uh, so that you're reminded every time i put up a new video and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.